nice of you to join me okay this video is going to be the end of the landscape one I'm going to um, we're going to crack on and get this done so what we're going to do in this video we're going to do the front and back covers with our acetate uh, on the inside then we're going to do the front and the back and then that should then wrap up that this that series of videos just nicely ready for us to go on to the portrait one now the portrait one won't take as long because I've done all the pages exactly the same in that book so that's probably only going to be a part one part two video but more on that when I when I film it um, this video the inspiration I got for these memory books was from a uh, online tutorial that I did sorry not online tutorial online workshop that I did with Claire Charville and it was I believe it's her was her Facebook live number three um, tutorial and in that we made the box and there was two different memory books inside a portrait and a landscape one but they were more of a concertina type um, memory book so this is my take on it but I just wanted to um, just let you know where I've got my sort of inspiration from the books are that I've designed here everything in them is my own creation they come from my own little head so to speak but um, that's where I sort of got my inspiration for from this box now if you want to go and follow the tutorial um, the website to head to is my creative spirit and um, you'll be able to find all the online videos that she's done and purchase whichever one if you want to do this one you can purchase the online store um, online tutorial um, just also to let you know quickly I'm not sponsored for this video at all this is um, directly down to me everything that I've got here I've bought myself if I give a shout out to a company or a product it's because I've enjoyed um, I've enjoyed using it myself in my own creative way so um, get all them things out of the way first and then we can get on with the video I don't think there's anything else oh yes in the corner there I will put a link to um, the previous videos in this so that if you wanted to watch them start from the start of this vid um, series of videos just click on that link and it should take you to the playlist right so on to the memory book now this is the one obviously that I've done before so we're going to we're going to do the front inside back cover first I don't know why I always leave the outside till the very last um, minute I think it's because that is something I like to spend a little bit more time on than I think anything else on the book because that is what you're going to see first of all so I think that's why I tend to do them at the last minute so uh, I've got some acetate here now in the original book I used a thicker acetate um, you could use um, your plastic packaging that you get maybe from your dyes or any plastic packaging that you, that is like a the more rigid plastic you could use uh, which would look really good I haven't got any of the um, thicker plastic um, oh yes I have sorry here we go I've got one sheet left but I don't want to cut this one sheet up just for this book so I'm going to use the thinner this is heat um, resistant acetate and um, as you can hear this is the thicker one and the wobble test is as you can see it's quite a sturdy um, piece of um, acetate I'm not sure what the, the thickness of this is though uh, and then this one is your heat in, um, in your heat resistant acetate and as you can tell it is quite um, it's a lot more thinner than this one but they should work either way so you know as you can see in my last book they work so I thought we'll try the thinner um, acetate on the other one and then I can save my A4 piece for another project 
So with your acetate, you need to cut it at three and a half. Okay, and you want to make sure that um, it is definitely butted up to your side because it's you. It's very hard to see, although in um, it seems to be showing up uh, <laughs> perfectly well. Um, so three and a half and by four and a half so that's your measurements three and a half by four and a half so it's not an actual well it's not a square it's a rectangle but that's okay because then that's going to give us a longer depth of our pocket so how we then cut it so we just need to um, get the point of our acetate um, sort of centralized in the groove of your cutting channel okay and then with the other end this this corner here also do the same thing so it's just a, a case of a, a bit of a, a maneuver about to get them both in the center as much as you can and oh, that's and that's what happens so in the center there just give it a quick just a little wood wiggle okay and then hold it down and cut okay and then that's your two triangles okay for your pages now to I'm not going to put these on yet but we've cut them so that that's good we've got them sort of done and ready so now you need just need to cut the paper for your front and your inside front and back now it can be different right. sizes I'm still really not going to choose I think I might choose um, something that is pretty plain actually no because what I wanted although this is the wrong oh no it's, not, it's the right side I could put that one there and that would be nice because then it would show that um, I could put it that way because it doesn't matter which way it goes I don't suppose and then that would give a nice um, yeah I'm going to use that one I'm going to use it that way don't think it's no, no, it's, no I think that because they're all sitting different ways so I actually okay, did before so let's take our measurement so the measurement for this is five and three quarters I think double check no I beg your pardon five and seven eighths by three and seven eighths and I need to I'm going to write these down because I forget five seven eighths by three seven eighths I don't know why it just goes in my head and then pops out again Okay, so I want it that way, so that needs to be in that way, so that needs to go that. So we need five and sorry, three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths like so and then that gives you a nice um, flower element and I think I might put that one on the back okay so that fits in there just nicely now what you could do if you wanted to if you're using craft card you could um, put cut this out as your craft card um, layer and then cut this out one eighth of an inch smaller if you wanted to so it's entire I'll leave that up obviously up to you so with that we're going to ink the edges okay don't forget to ink your edges I've said and I think I was using I wasn't using I was going to do black then but I wasn't I was using the Grand Espresso wasn't I which I've had a tidy oh there it is I was going to say I've had a tidy up and I've lost it but um, I found it again okay right I'm just going to use some cut and dry foam 
pan again. Just um, I'll probably take this bit out just so that I get rid of those white edges. You could use a pen if you wanted to, like either a distress pen um, or um, a, a normal felt tip would work if you just wanted to go around the edges but you didn't want the actual distress look at the, um, at the side, you know, on the paper. So that's another idea. So when I say like um, go around the edges, now this one is um, black so I'll do it on a, um, a spare piece of paper so that you can see and you just run it so you put your paper um, so that you've got your right side facing you and then just turn it over so that you're coming in from the back like so because if you if you make if your pen jumps off the edge of the the paper you've got the the, the worry of it actually then marking your card so if I show you for um, it's not going to do it now, you watch. So if I'm doing that and that's my right side, can you see it will mark my front of my paper? So if I do it on the back, um, from the back way, you, um, I've got less of that chance. So if it goes on the back, it's not going to make any difference. Okay, so it's really up to you how, you don't even have to do that. It's just, I, I like that sort of um, look. So we can go ahead and stick this in. Now I did, I've used so much glue this week, it's unbelievable. And what I tend to do with my glue is when I get to a, a pot that's nearly, it's running out, I then get my next pot out because I tend to buy them in bulk so that because I hate running out of glue. Nothing worse than doing a project and you've got no glue and um, so I always tend to buy in bulk so let me just now I'm using two different glues at the moment I've got uh, the, the Cosmic Shimmer and I've also been using the Pin Flare Book Binding Glue which is also very good glue um, I like the two actually they but this one I had open so oh, get it out. now I must admit this is the only only thing that there we go I'm not that keen on it it does tend to clog up an awful lot So let's put this on like so. Okay, nice and even. Then we can get. Now I'm not going to find it, am I? Oh, there we are. I was going to say it's uh, acetate. I would never see it. So you get your acetate pocket, and I'm using the quarter inch uh, score pal tape um, to put my acetate on only because it's uh, obviously thinner and you'll get more um, you get more room then in your pocket okay it will curl it up but once you come to put that down it will um, uncurl if you understand what I mean so don't worry because this is not going to be seen so it's not a problem so I'm going to stick this one down first and then I'll take off so I'm just going to position it where I want it to be so I'm going to come over just a tiny bit probably about half an inch from the edges there we go and then we take this one off she says there we are. like 
like so and then just pull it slightly just so that it stretches it out and then you've you've got your little pocket in there okay like so you can see it there a little bit better so to hide this because as you can see although this isn't too bad actually um you can see where the tape is so i don't like that so that's why i'm going to hide it so i cut out um two strips now i'm just going to measure this just to make sure i think we're going to do half an inch by so half an inch by i'm going to go just above so if we did half an inch by three and a half on one side so three and a half and i suppose four and a half the next um and if we go four and a half for the next size which is the same as our page but we're only going to do them half an inch so you can either do it in coordinated paper i think that looked nice actually so i'm going to do it with the spotty so half an inch Ooh. now if, you, if you're wondering why i've got two cutting blades on my board um it's because that one there although it looks dirty it's not it's just um, a, a permanent marker i've marked it so that i know that that's for my gray board now did i do an inch i did Oops, i'm talking okay half an inch i said sorry not an inch so half an inch and the first measurement was three and a half like so and the second measurement was four and a half like so okay so bring our page in now i'm just going to make sure i've got them correct i have and then that one will go over there like so but i'm going to put it that way because that's so can you see it just um frames it so to do our mitered corners now the easiest way I know how to do them is to get your the strips that you've cut out. Now, what I would do um, first of all is have a test so that you can get the feel of it. So, put them so you've got your short one and your long one. Put the short one over the top and the long one at the bottom, and make sure that they are in, in line. So you've so the, the corners or that little tiny square bit is in line can you see so it's it's not sort of like this okay it's in line like so then get your scissors and cut from this corner here to that point there okay so just line them up and then just cut down like so okay now you don't need those square those triangles then you can put your bottom one on and then your top one and there you have a perfect mitered corner how cool is that so if you wanted to you could mitre this bit down as well but i'm actually going to leave that um big i think um because i'm finding it oh no i could do so what I might do is turn it over, put, um, uh, do that, let me just get the corner, there's the, the, the edge of my acetate and that's the corner. So let me turn it round, no I'll have to do it this way. So. Put it. Put your um, strips on your page as though you were going to glue them down. Okay, so that they're all nice and central. And then find the top of the acetate. 
you know your lip thing your lip here so the edge there we go you can see it there and just put a little mark on the edge of your strip like so if you can see that okay just there a tiny little mark sorry I've been um, doing uh, painting with black so I've got all black paint on my fingers and I can't get it off just like so and then we put then that sh that gives us a nice mitered corner that way then you can do the same for this side so just a little mark I'm put that down I hope you can see that edge there I can't so hopefully you can there and then we need to cut that way like so I hope that was right yes okay so what I would do is I would have a practice first to make sure that you've got um, it right before you go ahead and use your your um, beautiful paper just to, because it is very mitered corners can be very difficult if you mitre them obviously the wrong way but um, so that's why I always say to give them a practice on things like that. So I was actually looking for the okay, and I've stopped in mid-sentence there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've really got the giggles today. I don't know what it is. I had a power cut here last night at, uh, and it was at, luckily I'd had my, my dinner early, um, but it, it went off about half past six and it didn't come on until quarter to twelve. Um, so it was, um, yeah, you get so used to being um, on, you, well, using your electric, you take it all for granted. Um, it was like I was thinking to myself, I'm going to have to get the barbecue out in a minute because I want a cup of tea. And uh, I, I couldn't, and I was thinking, how am I going to do it? Um, because I haven't got my barbecue out yet. It's still locked away, which I'll get out probably this weekend. But you just thought, right, okay, so I've got, and I had, I've got a tiny little gas burner that we took, we go on when we go camping. It's only a little tiny one that's got like a, a gas can canister. And uh, I was thinking, where is that? Um, I can get that out and I can make a cup of tea on that. Um, but um, and then I was thinking, oh, it's going to just take me too long to get everything out. And by the time I've done that um, and then got it all out, the electricity will probably come back on. Um, it didn't, but um, so I was gasping for a cup of tea. But I didn't want to go to sleep until the electric come back on because I'd had obviously lights on and everything and um, I didn't want to go to bed and then everything be on and me be asleep so I had to wait up so now you can with this put on um, your double sided tape if you want to Or you can just use glue. Now I'm going to go with the double sided tape. For the fact is I know that my glue will end up going everywhere. And because it's acetate it will mark it. So I don't, um, I don't want to have to clean up that mess. So I'm just going to use the um, quarter inch again. And that on I mean again you can use your glue if you want to but use it sparingly when you um, you're using acetate because glue trying to get glue off acetate um, can be a bit of a pain so let's just put this on here now I'm actually going to go just just to the edge of your 
acetate so push put it on and then put it down that's one side and make sure you get it the right way around and again just butt it up so that you've got that uh, mite and nice and make sure it's nice and straight and that's the second one so then when you put your tag in it's going to sit in there nicely now as I say this is that um, thin heat uh, resistant acetate so it is you know as you can see you can make pockets with it you don't necessarily have to have the thick stuff okay we've done our lovely pocket so now we just need to do our tag now you need to then obviously you need to back it onto some of your card whatever card stock you're using i'm going to use the craft card because that's what um i've used for my pages so i'm just going to get an off cut because you don't need an awful big piece so i'm going to cut my piece at i'm going to go at three. Oh, maybe not that way um, right so I'm gonna cut at three so that's brilliant for that side by four by four so three by four and that should give me a nice sized tag yep so three by four and then again ink your edges for your craft oh first of all corners i'm just using the snub corner puncher uh, which is the cropper dial they come in different um you can get different um designs and you can also get the rounded the corner rounders in different sizes as well something that's on my wish list okay so because it does make your make your tags look that um, extra bit special so three by four so then you need to do two and th seven eighths by three and seven eighths as your patterned paper so three and seven eighths Oh, that's right. Three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. No, I did it the wrong way, but it doesn't matter. It's still going to fit in that slot nicely. When I say I've done it the other wrong way, I've cut my paper um, wrong, but luckily it doesn't make too much of a difference with this paper. So. Uh, my tags then ink my edges and glue now I know I was going to use this as my back piece but um, hey ho there we go so and that is one tag now what I would also do as well on the back is put some um, plain white card um, just on the back so that you have got a place to journal or stamp onto and then just lift it up now it will go up it's just because um, I don't I'm being a bit careful because I don't want the um, corner to go uh, underneath the acetate and go in between the card the cardstock and your paper and then get glue all on my acetate so that then is my tag i'm going to put it that way like so so I quite like that so that's looking really good and i like it where you can see um the design through the acetate sheet but i mean if you wanted to you could put it that way and you could put a little message in there uh, which would be nice or what you could do which would be really really good is have a little flap on this so you could put a flap on over it and then you could write a secret message under there and then because when you lift it up you could see it that might be really cool as well 
so that's the front I'm going to do exactly the same on the back and the front all I've done is cut some elements out of the paper and then used some either hot glue or um, your pin flare uh, glue gel on the top and then this here is a cheap MDF words that I got from the works I did go back to see if I could get any more um, when I made this book up but unfortunately they haven't got them in stock anymore so I'm going to use something very similar probably one of the other words that come out of that um, packet as well so let me go and get them she says Now we've all got lots of things in our stashes and lots of words. Right, let's have a look. Okay, this is my sort of MDF words in here. Now I'm sure I put them in here. There we are. So that was the, the word packet that, um, as you can see, from the works. So you have love, hello, hope, smile, excitement, peace, sparkle, moments, dream, happy. So what have I got left? Um, I'm going to put sparkle because then moments sparkle is what I'm going to put. Not on that one. That's my uh, that's for the next book, the next um, series. Well, the same series, but um, the, the portrait one. So, um, we're going to put sparkle. Now, all I did with this was um, to paint them, because they're so small and intricate, it can be messy. So, I've just got a permanent marker, that uh, just a cheap permanent marker, and an off cut of paper if you want to protect because this is permanent and all I did was I just went over the word or the letters and what I may do with this is I might just put some um, glitter pen over the top So how quick was that? And I've got no paintbrushes now to uh, clean away. Not that I don't, I love getting uh, messy. So um, I've just got a very old, well I say old, it's just um, a sparkle pen, a glitter pen. And I'm just going to go over the top with a bit of this, the glitter pen. And I might just need to dry that. And then as you can see, oh please I hope you can see the sparkle. It's really sparkly. There we are. How cool does that look? very cool right so all we need to do then is just paper piece now what I did with this was is again I just carried the design along okay to decorate your front cover and to get your paper piece um, your front your spine and your back all paper pieced all together now I've I had to re-record this because the first one I did I made a complete hash of it that um, 
it uh, it was just easier to, for me to just re-record that part of the video so that's why you're seeing a couple of the uh, memory books uh, lying around so when I'm doing the front cover because I'm on A3 it's I can't fit it in my trimmer that way so I'm actually working on the five and seven eighths of th that um, that measurement so when I say that measurement so our book what we need to cut for the, the measurements would be three and seven eighths going um, the, the height by five and seven eighths which is going to be your length so I'm going to work on the length first now work out where which part of your paper you want to cut now I'm going to start from this side because I want um, that to be on my front cover there okay and but if you you know check have a look at your papers and and see which is the best for you so i'm going to cut with it going in like this so five and seven eighths that's going to be my first cut okay so that's one cut so that's my front cover so then we need this part here so that i'm just going to put that in the trimmer and then that part there is going to be my spine so my spine measurement is one and three eighths by obviously five and seven eighths no sorry not five and seven eighths beg your pardon three and seven eighths so one and three eighths just double checking one and three eighths by three and seven eighths one and three eighths so that then is going to be my spine just double check to make sure it fits yes it fits lovely so that's my spine and then i'm going to do the back and the back again was the five and seven eighths which is what we'll do first so that then is going to be my back okay so working from the back as soon as i've got that there we now need to cut the uh your height off so that would have been at three and seven eighths so then that would go on the back like so then you would put then you would cut your spine at three and seven eighths to cut this end bit off so that would then be your spine and then your paper your front would then match up with the spine at three and seven eighths cut that along and then that would be your front so i am going to ink my edges and i'm just going to do this really quickly because we do we want to get this sort of finished so that I, um, I can get it uploaded um, for you so then I can start on the portrait one now I, if you've got any questions then you know please do ask them put them in the comments or message me um, you know I, I tend to try and answer straight away sometimes i don't see them straight away so it might take me a few hours to actually get back to you but once i actually see it i do then try and reply um, so don't think that i'm ignoring you if i don't um, answer straight away the other thing i want to ask is uh, what else would you like to see is there anything that you would like me to cover um, is it any of the more memory dies that you would like um, me to cover the memory book dies um, would you, do you are you are you liking these ones that don't use dies as much to make your memory books um, just use them as your accents um, are you preferring those would you like something that's really different um, like a paper uh, bag album they're really cool to make um, you know there's lots of different albums out there would you just like um, some ideas on flips and flaps so don't make a memory book we can just make flips and flaps and um, 
sort of pages that then you could take away and put into your own memory books and then put your own measurements on you know let me know in the comments down below what you know what you would like to see and um, I'll try my hardest to try and get um, get some um, content up there so so that was my back just double checking to make sure no it wasn't that was my front so that's the front you see what I mean how easy it is so the front now I'm gonna put a little um, spine handle on this um, because I haven't done on the others but with the spine handle what you may find that um, is better for you would be to um, maybe back this first in craft card and uh, you know or whichever kind of card you're using because when you put the spine on you do need it to be quite substantial so that you can um, the book dangles not going to um, tear out of place um, I, I prefer to actually hide it this way um, behind your paper then actually put it through into the spines um, because I don't like to bulk that bit out but that's just my personal preference I mean um, it's entirely up to you on how you um, do your you know, how you attach them so I have got some small ones here and I've actually got two sorts. Um, I actually do prefer these ones um, that have got the three brad, where you put your extra brad, brads in, more so than these ones that have got the brad, which is the handle in, like so. They both are very useful uh, in each way, but these are just my um, preferred ones. I just think they sit nicer on your project. Um, and, and they're not so bulky as well, which is nice. Okay, so I'm just going to buy it, but again, if you want to be more precise, then um, go ahead. But I'm just going to put it down probably about three quarters of an inch down and then roughly in the middle and get my pokey tool. What could we do without pokey tools? We definitely love our pokey tools. And I don't know why I've done that. That's because I'm talking. Right, what I should have done is... Actually, I can still do it. So scrap all of that and we'll start that bit again. So with um, these ones, they've got the three holes. So... If you then just put your metal embellishment where you want it to go and then just mark with your pencil the hole. So I tend to try and do one first and then get that one anchored in place and then do the rest because that way I, I tend to get a bit more of a even finish. So that's one and just poke that to get a brad like so And then put the last one in. Okay, so that's then all stuck down. And then we can go ahead and glue that in place. Now I'm just going to put over those, I'm just going to put some um, stick double sided tape. Just for a bit more added protection, like so. There we go. 
go and it also flattens it down if you have got dexterity problems and you can't um, push the, the legs of the brad down then you can just use a small hammer just to tap gently um, to flatten them out okay. so make sure you get it up the right way okay, uh, for one moment then I thought oh no I've put this up uh, wrong side but no it's right it's okay Okay, push that down, make sure that they line up. So that's part. I love it, it looks so nice. And then we just need the um I'll just take that bit of that glue off. And we just need the this back piece. Like so. And then that on now sometimes as well if I, I have a um, a little personalized stamp that I sometimes stamp and put onto the back let's try that okay. there we go now I think I would possibly go a bit smaller with my stamp uh, with my punch but um, as time is getting on I thought I'd just cut it out with the bigger one and then I normally just put them on the back like so it's quite handy you can either just put it on a uh, glue I sometimes use a scallop square a uh, scallop square punch a scallop circle punch to add your uh, matte and layers to but then that just fits on there it just finishes off the back nicely like so and then the front all we've got to do now is cut out our elements so what I'm going to do is I will fast forward this and um, when we come back I will hopefully have all my elements cut out and now I might not use all of these I've cut out more than I'm going to use now the one thing I want to change on this album is if you can see this one although it looks really nice on on camera but what I did was I inked the edges in black and it really makes that pop but I wasn't that keen on it in the flesh if you understand what I mean so if I put it up closer there we go maybe you can see it I mean it looks really really nice on screen and it does look nice I will say but I'm being a bit fussy so what I thought I'd do is ink them around the edge just to get rid of my white edges in pink and I think I did it um, on a previous ones around here I don't know if you can see and it just softens those edges and I think I pr actually prefer that effect but again it's really up to you I'm just being really fussy with my edges so um, I thought I would stick to that same thing and just ink around the edges now you can use any ink that you have um, if you've um, obviously distress inks work well um, I'm just using the these Jane Davenport squid ink ones 
um, because I had this handy and I don't know if you can see it just blends in with the die cut piece now you obviously don't need to cut out um, pieces from the paper, you know, elements from the paper. If you've got dyes and you want to use dyes, then you can make your own flowers and make them make the front really pop. I just wanted to do um, a book where you didn't, and as long as you've got paper and grey board and cardstock, you really can make a book. So you, you know, if you're just starting out. And you haven't got many dies and things like that with just very limited supplies you can make a memory book so it you know it just I just wanted to show you that um, you know you don't didn't need to buy you know this die or that die etc um, you know as long as you've got you know some nice paper that you can you know you've got elements in then you can make a, an album and and really your basic supplies would really just be paper pad your cardstock your grey board some glue some double sided tape maybe an ink pad and a trimmer oh and a scoreboard so quite limited um, you know pieces of things that you would need I mean a trimmer you're going to use all the time a scoreboard you're going to use all the time you know oh and uh, if you've got punches you're going to use them all the time so it's just things that you're going to use again and again so right I've nearly finished inking all of these Okay, so what you just need to do is roll them in between your fingers. Just roll them and so that they create a curve. Okay, so they curved. That way you're going to get the height and then they're going to just sit nicely together. Again, you might not need them all. You might use them all. You might not. One there like so. Then... We had that one there and then a couple of leaves. Okay, so I think my glue gun is ready. So I'm only going to put glue on the two ends. So, so when I say the two ends, the two raised bits and that would happen. more on that now because that's dried and then we're just going to stick it down so stick it down so you've still got that curve so it's just so you've got it a bit more 3d and put that there like so so I'm trying to create near enough the same design that I had before because I quite liked that design so I'm going to put that just there although I probably could do with having a, a bigger uh, are they poppies bigger poppies I think so but never mind we, we work with what we've got so that's like that now you could put another poppy there um, no. So now I'm just going to add these little tiny ones, I think. I quite like them. And this one here, I'm just going to add this one to the end, to there. Push it down. And then the leaves. So I'm going to have a leaf coming there. Now if you've got swirls, you can add swirls. Uh, if you've got uh, obviously fancy leaves, you could make the, use them with fancy leaves. 
So that can go in there, like that. And we may put that one, I don't know whether to put it there, I don't want to make it yet, I'll put it that side, like there. And I'm just trying to be careful so they don't uh, burn my fingers. And I think I'll put that little one just there, just on the edge there, like so. I've got that leaf there, but I don't think I'm going to need it. I think that's uh, what, look it up. Oh. I did that all out of shot, didn't I? I do apologise for that. That's my own fault for getting too engrossed in it and not watching. So all I did was I just um, I just placed them on. I hope you can see that. I really do. Um, very much the same as the one that I'd done before. I'm just going to bring you out because you probably are too close. There we go. You might see my dogs walking underneath there. So we'll bring that out a bit. So you, so as you can see, you, you've, I've got. I hope that's straight. Here we are. I think. Mm, there. So we, so we've got very nearly the same. Now, can you see the difference with the different inks around the edges? I actually prefer this one to that. Uh, I think this one is more brighter. It's more um, very. It's more vibrant. Um, this one looks a bit more shabby. Not shabby, should I say? It's a bit more worn, a bit more vintage. Whereas this one is like really. Um, it's just really it just makes it brighter. Um, so that that's the difference between the two. Now we've just got to add our sparkle, which does sparkle. I will say. Now you can put it at the top, like so. You could put it at the side. You could even put it down your spine if you wanted to, or I'm just going to keep it exactly the same as that and have it um, on my right hand side. Now I'm just going to use a bit of uh, hot glue. You could use just um, PVA works very well with this. It does, um, you know, it will stick it. Um, I just wanted to do it for quickness. So that it's done and then if you've got any of those um spider web trailings or from the glue gun all i would do would be to just get your heat gun and just give it a quick blast and that should melt all those long stringy bits so that is another album completed and how although they are very nearly the same they are two different albums um you know they look different with the different um papers that you use on the top whereas this one what i've what i've done which is um it was an accident accidentally on purpose um is the flowers are the are from this where I've cut all the elements out so it looks as though that's a, a big dis, um, bouquet of flowers which um, looks I, I, I quite like it so yeah so the inside is virtually and we didn't put this bit on but you can use that you can put that on at a later stage um, add your extra bits um, inside um, I'm really pleased with the way that the little drawer closure has um, come out on this album. I think I learnt my mistakes on this one um, and um, didn't do them so much on here. So um, yeah, that, that's the thing. You, you, you still, I can do memory albums every single day, and you always improve on what you've done from the last, the last book. So you, it's always a learning. You're always learning. So again, lots of different um, bits and bobs you can put in there. And we will just tie that around again. So this is quite um, a nice little album that you can make. Um, 
you know um, it, it's you can just it, you can make it within an afternoon really you know maybe a, a whole day day's work you could poss possibly do this whole album now the one thing i haven't done on this album which i did on this one was put my strips down the middle so where i've added the decorative strips in the middle of my um hinge um i haven't done that so all you would need to do would be um cut out um the length which was let's just do this so the length is um three and three quarters th sorry three and three eighths uh, by three eighths of, of an inch wide okay so all these um, ones here will be three eighths of an inch and then the one in the middle would be a quarter of an inch I think um, I'm sure it was a quarter of an inch We'll just measure that. Yes. So quarter of an inch in the middle, three eighths of an inch on the outside. Okay. So on these long ones here, these will be three eighths of an inch. It just sets the the hinge off a lot better than having it plain. Again, entirely up to you. I'm sorry I didn't get to do that, but as you can see the difference, all you need to do is just um, cut your um, papers up in those measurements and you'll be able to put them in so thanks again for sticking with me and for watching this series of videos i'm going to upload this one i'm going to edit this one tonight and upload it hopefully it won't take me too long um and then i will get on to filming the portrait one now i will show you a little sneak peek so um you can have a look at it now i haven't again i've not added any words to this but you can do possibly the one that we do together i will put some sort of word on okay and this is going to be so quick and simple because i haven't they're all all the pages are exactly the same so there's four pages and you get this front page here it's like a a policy type opening and you've got a pocket in here okay now a few things I'm going to do different on the one that we do than what I did on this again I'm constantly learning all the time so a few things I'm going to do differently but it's going to look very much the same so that sort of opens up and then you can put a tag inside now it's not a very big opening but it will be okay so don't um, take that size as what we're going to do and then on the back it's just a plain back but we've also got a hidden pocket inside which um, I've put some tags in and again I finished these off with our white card and um, those lovely tab um, elements uh, from Cool Cats Crafts on there so um, I, I love this album I really do it's so quick and easy so again all the um, pages are the same so it's going to be one of those ones that's been to be quite a quick um, video and um, again with this one I've done the um, the hinge decoration as well I haven't done anything on the front covers but again we'll do that on the video together i may do exactly what i've said in there maybe put a acetate pocket in um but maybe change it up a little bit so um thanks again for sticking by me i really hope you've enjoyed these videos as much as i've enjoyed making them it's been real fun i will have to say i've enjoyed it immensely um it's been good fun it's been good to get out oh, it's good been good to um get back and uh, on doing the things that I love um, please subscribe if you're not a subscriber um, really really appreciate it uh, I'd also really appreciate it if you wouldn't mind is sharing my video um, on your social media pages um, that would be so helpful it would um, help me get some more subscribers to my channel so that you know more people get to know to 
hear about uh, what I do and things. Um, come and follow me on social media. Um, Facebook and Instagram are my main ones. I do do Pinterest and I've got a blog and all Twitter and all those types of things. And I will put the links in the description down below. Um, also with the link to Claire's shop in case you want to head over there and buy the um, the album with the box and um, yeah, so you could do that uh, anything else? no? I think that's it again thanks for sticking with me and I will see you on the next one bye Now with this stamp I tend to use a positioner for the simple reason as um, sometimes I don't get it inked enough. Okay, so again it doesn't matter how whereabouts you um, stamp this because you're going to just cut it out anyway and it is scrap. And I think my ink pad is running out. Right, I'm going to leave that on there because what I didn't. God, I'm making so I'm making rookie mistakes today. I certainly am. I don't think that's going to right. Goodness, we're going to have lots of bloopers on this video.